Hello ladies and gentlemen, and you're watching Paleo 101, where we talk about fossils, minerals, and everything recorded in the Earth's rocks. Well today I just wanted to briefly talk about fossils and their environment. So let's say you go to a rock outcrop in Ohio or Tennessee, and you find a rock that looks like this. You know, you find a rock and you say, hmm, that's interesting. You even get your handy dandy hand lens and you look at it, and you say, hmm. You can see that it has all these weird different organisms inside this rock here. Um, you can see there's shells in it. Mm, that's very interesting. What age is this rock? Um, what environment was this rock laid down in? Did it live in an ocean? Were these animals li living in an ocean? Well, if that person asked that question, that person would probably answer his own question because that would be correct. These um, organisms are composed of uh, bryozoans and brachiopods that were laid down during a shallow Devonian sea 400 plus million years ago. And you can see that all these different swirly lines here are bryozoans. And here's another example of the same rock. This is fossiliferous limestone. Both of these examples come from the Ross Formation in Tennessee. You can even see here, here's a good looking brachiopod here. And you can see it has, you can see um, different types of bryozoans and shells all throughout this uh, um, fossiliferous limestone. You can say, hmm, you can question yourself, this was, was this laid down in the bottom of an ocean? It had to have been. There are shells and all kinds of uh, marine animals inside of this limestone. So limestone usually, uh, in fact, most likely always forms in a shallow marine environment. And you can say, hmm, this had to have been laid down during a shallow ocean. This is a uh, fossiliferous limestone and all these organisms were laid down in an ocean 400 million years ago. And we can use uh, specific fossils to tell the age of fo uh, to tell the age of rocks, and we can use those particular kinds of fossils to tell what environment were these animals living in, um, in, in in the distant past in Earth's history. Here's another example. Um, here's a rock. Um, this is um, com just composed of limestone. Uh, excuse me. It's composed of just different kinds of plant material. You can see here. Here's a horsetail, and here are a couple of ferns. Um, being stretched out from this uh, line, from being stretched out from this uh, uh, shale. And here's another example. Here's a beautiful, well, well-preserved uh, uh, plant fossil here. And so you see this, you can see, oh, this is composed of uh, a coal. This is composed of shale, and most likely shale forms in marine environments such as mud, uh, uh, mud environments, muddy environments. And you can say, hmm, this had to have been some type of tropical swamp. Uh, 300 million years ago, this particular fossil um, was living in an environment where um, there were swamps accumulated everywhere. The Pennsylvanian period was a very interesting period because it's basically when we started to get the uh, coal formation. And you can see here, there is a perfectly preserved plant fossil in uh, this particular kind of rock, which is shale. So fossils tell a unique story. They tell the age and they tell how old an animal was. They also tell the environment, what the environment was like millions of years ago. We can look at rocks. We can even look at different minerals inside of rocks to tell what uh, what the environment was like. Um, there's a green clay-like mineral called glauconite, and there are a couple of examples of glauconitic limestone and glauconitic sandstone out there. And it's a green mineral. And glauconite usually and most, most likely always forms in a shallow marine environment. So based upon that mineral alone, if you find that particular mineral, this green clay-like mineral, you can say, hmm, this had to have been a, a marine environment. We can see glauconitic limestone. We can see glauconitic sandstone. And you can say, hmm, if we see this particular kind of mineral, we can say, well, if you can find glauconite anywhere, then this most likely had to have been a marine environment. Um, we can also look at the features of rocks. Here's a good example of a good, nice piece of sandstone. And you can see these uh, ridges throughout the sandstone. These ridges are actually moving, currents moving water. And you can look at it and you can say, hmm, these ridges, they're feel bumpy. They don't, they feel very irregular. This was uh, basically a current moving. Um, this was once the bottom of an ocean. You can see that it was once moving water. So that moving water actually indented in the sandstone. And you can say, well, if you see ripple marks like these, so you can you can definitely tell that this was laid down in a marine environment, that this had to have been a marine environment because you see ripple marks, maybe maybe a beach or maybe say uh, a riverbed or something, something like that. 
So if you see rebel marks and if you see those types of geological features, then you're most likely going to be in a marine environment. Well, what about terrestrial environments? Um, you can also, oh, also you can also look at turned over pebbles. You can also see grounded pebbles to say, well, this had to have been a marine environment because um, you can look at the sand grains and you can look at pebble grain size. And you can say, well, these rocks had to have been moving in a current, uh, moving in a riverbank over, you know, millions plus, you know, mil, mil, plus million years ago. So what about terrestrial environments? You know, let's say you go over to Connecticut and you see dinosaur footprints. You see, um, you know, you see uh, theropod dinosaur footprints either in Texas or in Connecticut. And you say, wow, that's interesting. What was the environment like over that, or plus when those dinosaurs were walking around? Well, if you look at the uh, rock that the uh, footprints are encased in, you can say, hmm, this had to have been a, a beach flat. This had to have been a, uh, a lake in which these animals are walking on. So also terrestrial environments and marine environments, you can tell that the animal was in some type of environment where the uh, sediment was soft so that so it could put its footprint inside the sand or inside of whatever uh, the uh, sediment was during that particular time. Um, you can probably look at the uh, sandstone. You can see, wow, a dinosaur was stepping inside of something, um, inside of a mud or inside of a, a, a beach, and it lifted up its toe and then made another track, and then it made another track. So you can look at the rocks and even you know trace fossils alone, you can tell what the environment was like over that millions of years. So let's say, like I said, let's say you find a dinosaur footprint and you wanted to know what the environment was like. Um, Glen Rose, Texas of, the, of Texas has a, a great accumulation of dinosaur footprints, two coming from um, very known dinosaurs such as Acrocanthosaurus and Paluxysaurus. Um, you can look at those footprints today and you can tell that, well, if you look at these footprints, they're very deep and shallow. This had to have been some type of lake that they were uh, in because the sediment was once soft so, so their uh, footprints can be encased inside of that rock. So the sediment must have been soft so the uh, footprint can um, be inside of the uh, sediment that these animals were walking on. So, if, so certain clues such as minerals and fossils can tell you the environment in which uh, some of these rocks were laid down over millions of years. So you can use, a, uh, you can use fossils and you can use rocks and then you can also use certain minerals to tell what the environment was like during millions of years. You know, Charles Lyell once said that the present is key to the past. You can use the present in order to tell what the past was like. So we can use uh, modern environments and we can tell the, what those modern environments was like if we study the past. So the present is key to the past. And all you have to do is study the key, uh, the, is to study the uh, present so you can know what the past was like over millions of years. This is Paleo 101 and I'll see you later with another video.